Yo, what's up everybody? It's me, Tim Keys, and today I'm here to do a product review. I want to talk about MG The Futures Loop Pack, specifically the Lo-Fi Da Vinci. Yeah, so let's hop into it. MG The Future is a beat maker, producer, slash content creator who has been doing his thing for quite some time, and he has been making quite a few good products in his own right. And I just want to shine some additional light on these products and talk about why I think his stuff is good, why you should take a look at it. And I want to talk about the importance of loops in the producer community as a whole and their place in, you know, the world of beat making, sound designs, etc. So let's get started. I'm going to change my view some using reason and let me find I gotta get my stuff hold on a second gotta pull it up all right so now I got it pulled up I bought a few of these kits last week as they went on sale and I'm glad that I did right now I'm just gonna look at lo-fi da Vinci volume one and discuss some of the, the stuff that's in here and just do a basic demonstration of how you can use these so He's got these, he's got the overall folder, and then he does a wonderful job of dividing these up into different subfolders to make it easier for navigation. He's got some stuff mixed in from the SP404. Hey, listen! <laughs> Man, that's uh, Legend of Zelda. Oh, can... Street Fighter 2. <laughs> Mortal Kombat. Hey! Fatality. More Mortal Kombat. Super Mario 64. I don't know what that's from. That's from, uh, I don't know. But the cool thing about these is they've been processed using SP404 to give you that lo-fi grit. These came from the Moog Grandmother. These are some nice bases. And one thing about these one shots that are really cool is that you could take these and process them in, in different plugins. So if you have something like Reason Grain, um, Simpler and Ableton, um, or Sheesh, even something like Pat Shop Pro, you can really get busy with these sounds. It's got the hi hats. throw those in perks they've all been labeled in the bpm so depending on the DAW that you're using if it doesn't match the bpm or if it doesn't do tempo matching you can just set it up in your sequencer which is very handy <clears throat> got your snares Those hit nice. And then finally, most importantly, you have your loops. Cool. Let's get started. I'll do a brief demonstration how you can use these in your setup if you're using something like Reason. First thing you want to do, you want to find the BPM 72. I'm going to take that, punch that in 72 BPM. And now I'm just going to take that, throw it into the DAW, play it. Make sure everything's lined up nice and neat. So I got a good four bar loop going. 
Now I'm going to jack this up to about 142. Set that there. I'm changing the tempo. I want to make it faster, but I'm going to stretch this out. So I'm going to do that by holding down the control button. You see the little clock icon come up and stretch it out to about right here. Cool, so I got that in there. Now I'm going to go back to my instruments, pick up a drum rack. Just messing around with my sounds. I might keep some of those sounds, but I think what I'm going to do, I don't like that kick. I'm going to go back to my folder. I'm going to grab snare. I'm going to click on that folder, that arrow back. And I don't want the snare yet. I want that snare. So I'm going to throw that in. I'm going to make sure the level's all the way up. I'm going to hit the run. Program this out. I'm going to drag it all the way to 64. I'm going to do some brief programming real quick and then I'll explain afterwards. All right, so I got my riff programmed in and basically what I did is I changed it from your standard 16 steps to 64, went in and added some variation within the hits, added some flams in there too, making sure I hit a little red button above the numbers to You know, so that, you know, change the the rhythm and the cadence without you having to go in and, you know, program every individual one of these slots to get that, that ratchet <clears throat> or that triplet effect in your, your hi-hat. So let's keep it going. Next thing I'm going to do. Is I'm gonna take that and we're going to change the pitch. I'm gonna drop it down. Let's play it. I should mess with that.
Yep, I probably will. So again, I just went back, used the, the bass drum that was already uploaded in this device, put it in at various spots within the step sequencer itself. So you can hear that. Next, I want to go, going to add my Kong, hit that reset. So now I'm going to take some of these other sounds. I'm going to put them in the Kong and sequence them out. So I'm going to go with that kick. Going to make sure I have that activated. And I can raise up the level. Then I'm going to go here and go into my snares. And again, I'm going to raise up the level. For the sake of time. <laughs> I'm not going to make this elaborate. I'm just going to pump something out real quick. All right. So, yeah. Outside in the sequencer mode, I got my stuff loaded up. Let's hit that record. Not my best work, but it'll serve my purpose. I hit that quantize. Let's play it back real quick. Next one, I'm gonna that. Gonna open up. Instance of brain. That sounds good. Now what I'm going to do here is add one of those bass tones. Keep in mind as you do this, just open this up so you can see it. When you upload an instance of grain and you know you have your instrument set up, when you go back to reset it, it's going to have it set up to long grains, which is a granular-esque tone. So I'm going to throw this in there. It's going to change the texture of the instrument, although for right now, because I haven't really messed with this part so much, it's going to sound very similar for the most part. I'm going to add some more drive to that by putting the sound through the filter. Hear the difference? that up. I'm also going to extend this out just a little bit. Put this at legato. Turn the portamento on. some of that a little bit more of those artifacts so set it to tape mode <clears throat> when you start hearing those artifacts and things of that nature you want to set it to tape mode because tape mode won't add those different delay effects that come in as a consequence of having it set in your granular mode let's turn on i'm going to turn on the oscillator
So. You already have an aggressive sound with the grandmother mode and adding that oscillator. Having it go through the filter and modifying the waveform. Gonna add even more texture to the sound. <clears throat> All right, let's go back to here. Let's keep that simple. Ah, uh, sheesh. F7. So I'm not going to do a whole lot. I'm just going to add the bass line and then call it good. That's it. So yeah, I mean, <laughs> that's that's pretty much it for this video. You know, I don't want to turn this into a beat making deal, but yeah, man, these these loop kits from MG the View, ah, she's MG the Future, are great. I apologize for butchering your name. I am extremely tired. What happens when you get old? Um, no, these are great. They sound good. One thing I appreciate about these loop kits in general is especially when you find one of high quality content they are a very easy way for you to expand your sound and get inspiration um <clears throat> i know from some people there's still a thing about using loops <laughs> it's kind of like we went from sampling being bad and then when they finally got that settled in it was like well i don't you know yeah that's why i use loops and then the the folks that sample would be like, well, I don't use loops because I chop up my own stuff. And I was like, yeah, man, whatever. It's this, this is easier. You don't have to chop up something because it's already been done for you. You can go that extra step and chop this stuff up and turn it into a melody line within itself if you choose to, but you don't have to. And these kits that come with these packs sound really good. They've been processed. They've been colored. They have a nice crunchy texture, if you will. And one thing about getting these packs from, I got to say this, one thing about buying these packs from your independent developers, like an MG the Future, they're connected to the culture. So yeah, I could go buy a pack from Native Instruments. It'll sound clean. It'll sound polished. It'll sound really good. But when I get these, these type of packs, if I want to make that lo-fi sound, if I want to make that drill sound, if I want to make that trap sound or whatever, then you go to the people who are a part of that culture that know how to get that sound from their instruments. It's going to sound a lot better because it's coming from the people who make that type of content. So it's going to be different and it's going to hit closer to home as opposed to, you know, you could get your stuff from a major company, uh, again, a Native Instruments, a UVI or, or whoever, and they're going to sound good because they will have figured out how to do some of this stuff. In my opinion, this stuff hits better. <laughs> it just hits better. Um, and yeah, in terms of using loops, uh, collaboration. I might not ever get a chance to work with the MG, the future, or I might not ever get a chance to call somebody up and say, hey, man, can we come over and reserve some studio time and do a session recording, you know, some guitars and some pianos and some whatever. <clears throat> but I can get a hold of somebody who's done these loops and they sound amazing and they sound good. And 
it's another step in that direction that allows for collaboration to prompt me to do something different and have good quality sounds and help me on my journey to making good beats as a music production person. I can't talk. Music producer and beat maker. So yeah, man, I would say check out Lo-Fi Da Vinci. It's been out for a while, so it's a little bit older now, but check it out. Go grab it. Um, MG The Future has a lot of good stuff at his store. And if you're just somebody that's looking to expand your sounds in a... Yeah, if you want to expand your sounds, you don't want to break the piggy bank, but you want to have good quality and have some stuff at just, uh, your disposal, take a look at his stuff. The He also has some stuff from his Spicy Sundays uh, recordings that he used to do. Check those out because those are free. They also sound really good. They'll give you a taste of what he can do. So, hey man, thank you for watching this video. I'm Tim Keys. I'm out. Peace.